Okay, so in today's video we're going to be discussing a problem that is uh, cropping up more and more lately. At least I am confronted with it more and more lately. And uh, it refers to converting a TPA amplifier. So in this case we have a TPA3118 amplifier, but it could be pretty much any other amplifier chip. From accepting a single-ended input, which in this case is right, left, and ground, right, so what you would have on a headphone cable, to a differential input, right? Because these chips actually do accept a differential input, which means right channel has right, left, and right, um, sorry, right positive, right negative, left positive, left negative, right? And uh, this can be done right on on this on many amplifiers, and um, as I've already stated, the reason why you would do this is this way. This is a very elegant and high quality way of uh, eliminating any ground loop noise you might have when connecting a Bluetooth module to one of these ampli these amplifiers, right? So instead of having a transformer on the audio signal, which is probably the worst solution, right? An isolating transformer, or a DC-DC isolating converter powering the Bluetooth amplifier, which, yeah, since it comes bundled with the modules, then probably it's still a passable solution, right? And that does fix the, the issue, that does support a single-ended input and doesn't yield any noise. But by far, right, the best way of doing this, especially if you're uh, power conscious, right, because that Mornson or ND or whatever brand it is, DC-DC converter on the back of, uh, let me right quick bring one. Right, so I was talking about this ND isolating DC-DC converter, right, and this is incredibly inefficient, right. So this is perhaps even a tiny bit more inefficient than actually a linear regulator, right. So if this draws 20 milliamps, this will draw about like 30, 40. That's the last time I checked. Maybe they've gotten better, I don't know, but still they are very, very, very inefficient, right? So if you want a speaker with an insanely long standby time, because when these are not streaming, they draw like pretty much nothing, like two, three milliamps, five. It's for sure less than 10 in any case, right? So basically what you want to do, right, is get yourself the data sheet. Um, let's solve the glare issue. I'm hoping this will, will do it. All right, that's good enough. All right, so basically what you want to do is identify the fourth, fifth pin, right, which are the right uh, positive and negative inputs, and same for the left, which are 10 and 11. All right, and so in this case, I have already done that. Uh, it helps to buzz out the traces, right, with a multimeter to just find which capacitors are there because you'll always find at least one extra capacitor that has to do with, um, I don't know, I think it's the, the protection circuitry or, or something, I don't know. But you don't have to lift that one up, right? So what you want to do, zoom in a bit, is basically heat these up and simply lift them up, right? Simply, it is very tedious and uh, finicky. But it's definitely doable, right? And so you lift them up, you definitely stress the shit out of these capacitors by heating them on one side and, and not the other when you're putting them down and shit, but ah, so far so good, right? I haven't had any issues. And uh, yeah, so basically that is how you do the, um, do a conversion for a regular amp. And in some cases, this conversion is a must, right? is an absolute must and we are talking about the TPA3118 again CSRA uh, 64215 combo boards from HYT so um, from HYT yeah so these are incredibly well done right the PCB is top-notch the buttons are the best money can buy probably better than than the best one money can buy uh, chokes do not get hot at all. Uh, standby consumption is excellent. Uh, the only thing that you could improve power-wise is perhaps changing this linear regulator with a DC uh, with a switching one. But again, incredibly well done. Very nice. It has the programming port, which is identical to what you find on these modules. So if you've ever created yourself a um, a programming header. 
such as, for example, this one, right, which just simply plugs in. Uh, these are pogo pins. I'll uh, leave them in the description, right? I don't know offhand what exact size these are, but they are perfect, right? The pogo pins themselves go through the holes. If I could just line them up. And then the actual body of the pogo pin goes in a bit as well, right? And then it really is steady. Anyway, so moving on, right? So coming back on track, the problem with this board is insanely weird and insanely severe at the same time. So I'll cut a bit later to a sound clip where you can uh, definitely see what I'm talking about, hear what I'm talking about. But what they have going, right, this module, I think, right off, off the top of my head, I'll, I'll probably put in a, a picture round about here. But it's left negative, left positive, right negative, right positive, right? Let's just go with that. So they capacitively couple those, right? You can see the four cap uh, capacitors. Then they go through a resistor. And then they go through a resistor to ground after that. Again, I don't know why they're attenuating it, but they are. Following that, they go into an op amp, right? Which would have been here, which I've ripped up uh, ghetto style with a pair of pliers. You can see it's quite rough on the solder, but again, I didn't care if all the traces would have lifted up, it would have still been fine. And then something else happens, and then it goes into the TPA3118 amplifier, but in a single-ended configuration. Why? I have absolutely no idea. I can only imagine that the uh, example data sheet, right, the example implementation had it like that, and they somehow really like it or, or something. But what ends up happening is there's a huge, huge noise floor. So it's hissy as fuck, right? You can be on the other side of the room and hear this hiss. And it really sounds weird, right? So the bass is not quite right. Like there's, there's weird stuff going on, right? And so what you do is in this case, you can again pop, up, uh, pop off with uh, just a pair of pliers or heat them up elegantly. Uh, these capacitors, right? So in this case, they're taking the negatives to ground and the positives to the op amp, right? And so you pop off, again, the same connections for left and right positive negative and simply bridge them, again, simply, right? It is quite a finicky job. Simply bridge them um, with the other side of the, the capacitors, right? And that way you basically get the differential output of the CSR chip into the differential input of the uh, TPA chip. And the difference is mind-boggling, right? It is in... First of all, there's absolutely no background noise, and the bass is way deeper and way warmer. Like, it is unambiguously better, and you can instantly notice it. So I'll cut out to the scene of the problem before, and maybe I have some recording with the working afterwards. And that's pretty much the end of this uh, public service announcement.